Okay, let's look at the 2016 question. So this shows a graph of how the voltage across a capacitor changes with time. Um, and it tells us the capacitor discharges through a fixed resistance. Capacitor is fully charged at the start, t equals zero seconds. I mean, I don't know why we spend so much time looking at how we get straight line graphs when in exams they tend to talk about these curves ones much, much more. Um, so it says draw a circuit diagram to show how the capacitor may be charged quickly and discharged more slowly. Now, what we can do for that question is we need some sort of power supply to charge it okay remember it has to be a dc power supply to charge it so um we have one there going down to a kind of double throw switch all right that's our circuit okay so in the upper position current can travel like this and charge our capacitor when we throw the switch to the lower position it will discharge the capacitor like that going through the resistor so it will discharge slowly if you notice in that top position we don't have any resistance therefore it will do what the question asks it will charge quickly and um, there is another way of drawing this which does work for um for charging and discharging a capacitor which is where we put the resistor in here and then when it's charging it will go through this circuit but then the resistor is part of that circuit and it means the capacitor charges slowly as well as discharging slowly if we wanted to charge fast and discharge fast then we need to move that resistor down to the lower part of the circuit So it's not in the upper portion okay you do need to be able to draw diagrams like that it then tells us um well so it's draw a circuit show how the capacitor can maybe charge quickly discharge quickly but it told us we measured the voltage across the capacitor so you should have a voltmeter in parallel across the capacitor um using your circuit describe a procedure that would enable someone to record the data um required so start to discharge by throwing the switch to the lower position and and start the stop clock okay at the same time and then record the voltage from the voltmeter every 10 seconds is a nice round number okay um deduce the time constant for the capacitor resistor circuit from figure 3.1 now the time constant is equal to the time taken for the voltage to fall to 1 over e of its initial value this is only worth two marks which might affect what we do now one over e another way of writing that is e to the minus one and if you type that into your calculator you get 0.37 or 0.368 if we want to be more precise of its initial value so let's just go to our graph and work out how long that takes now this is not a nice graph i don't know if the actual paper would have had a nicer grid in behind it but let's try and work with what we've got i would say well there's 17 i'd say that v naught is probably about 17.8 volts so 0.368 times 17.8 gives us am i using the full value for one over e for this just for accuracy 6.54 sorry 5, 5 volts if we round it um so what i want to do is i want to go to the 6.5 so there's about seven there's about 6.55 draw a line across 
draw line down and then measure this time here as our time constant okay which is about 50 um i'd say about 58 seconds okay mm -hmm. now um the I would like to mark that on so i'd say that this is one over e times v naught or something like that just to show what we're doing that is enough according to the mark scheme that is enough to get full marks for that part but we've always said if it asks for reliable value what i would maybe do is go to 10. okay read across read down and then go to one over e times 10 which will give me 3.7 which is about there go across with that um, and read down and you should get that that is about 58 seconds again and then take an average of those two values okay um, now um, there is another way you can do this. What you could do is you could read off V at a time T. So just pick a point on your graph essentially. So like let's pick, I don't know, let's pick here. Read off that value for V and T. And if you know V naught as well, then you can put it into the equation V equals V naught E to the minus T over tau. And from that, you can rearrange it by taking natural logs and find out what tau is. It's a harder way of doing it. Um, and it's only taking one point from a graph. Um, I think you're better doing it, you taking those readings off the curve. Okay. Um, next part then says, if three resistors have a value of 123, and the capacitor is made up of three equal valued capacitors in series, determine the capacitance of each capacitor. So what we're saying is, Oh, sorry. Yeah, let's. We're saying we have three equal capacitors in series, and we need to determine the capacitance. Let's call that C, and that C, and that C, and that's equivalent to some total CT. Now, what we can tell is from the time constant above, um, tau equals RC. So we put in our value eight equals one hundred twenty-three by ten to the three times C. So the capacitance in that circuit will be 58 divided by 123 to the power 3, which is, let's say, 472 um, by 10 to the minus 6 farads. But that's the total capacitance of that circuit. Um, but it's saying this is actually three capacitors in series in here that's making it up. So we know that the total capacitance of our circuit needs to be that but we have three capacitors in series um, and our equation for capacitors in series is we add the reciprocals so um c1 plus c2 both c3 but they're identical so we have just called that capacitance c which means that when we add them together one over ct equals three over C, so C would equal 3 CT. So the capacitance of each of these capacitors here must be 3 times the total capacitance of the circuit, which should give you a C of 1.42 by 10 to the minus 3 farads. Okay. Now that fits in with our little rules we were talking about in one of the last lessons where if we add capacitors in series, the total, if they're all identical, two capacitors in series, the total capacitance will be half the capacitance of each of those capacitors and three capacitors, identical capacitors in series, which is what we have here, the total capacitance will be a third of each of those capacitors. So if you take this here and divide it by three, it should give you that value, okay?